And ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the all-time greats, my buddy, Mr. John Wayne. You're listening to the John Wayne Gritcast with me, Ethan Wayne. The hell I was. We're talking all about the life and legacy of my father. John Wayne. Mr. John Wayne. John Wayne is the United States of America. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. Hi, everybody. Today, we're lucky to have Stacy Mulder, our vice president at the John Wayne Cancer Foundation, with us to talk about uh, things we were able to accomplish in 2021. Stacy uh, and I have known each other for how long? Oh, gosh, 25 years. Yeah, 25 years or so. And she has, has had a long career in nonprofits, and we were lucky to have her join the um, John Wayne team. What? A year or more? Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Oh, gosh, time's fun. I'm wise when we're having fun, right? Well, thanks, Stacy. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's kick it off. From I met you with Amy way back in right. the he's Vice President of Wayne Enterprises. You guys yeah. have been friends forever, and uh, Amy's been an incredible asset to to the enterprise and to the Cancer Foundation. And she was really, you know behind pulling you on to help us and uh, uh we owe her for that because you've been great Thanks. i'm just trying to think where where we might want to start maybe we could get some background on you like yeah you know, sure your history yeah i'd love to um, first of all i'm just so grateful to be here i love this organization i love the work that we do and it's so fitting from my background growing up in orange county uh you know of course i was aware of john wayne because my dad is a huge john wayne fan so i grew up watching John Wayne movies. I was in Colorado the day your dad died, Ethan. And I cried because I felt like watching his movies, I felt like I knew him. So it hit our whole family pretty hard. Um, My dad, like I said, was a huge fan. So kind of circling back, um, being here now is such a treat for me because my dad's had cancer twice. He's had skin cancer. He's had um, bladder cancer. I have a plethora of friends from my childhood friend who had brain cancer, Susan, to my aunt, to my neighbors. You know, so being able to fight cancer for me um, is just so fulfilling to be able to do it for work and make a difference in people's lives. And my background really was right out of college. Um, I knew I wanted to do something to help people. I studied psychology and I did a little work in the psychology area and it wasn't really feeling it. And I saw this ad that said, help kids and do special events for a nonprofit organization. I said, Hey, that sounds like fun. I love kids. And I love doing events. They've done some of that in college. And so let's check it out. And that started my career in nonprofit. And once I started working in nonprofit, I realized how much I love making a difference. And so I spent my career there. And now being here at the John Wayne Cancer Foundation, growing up watching John Wayne's movies, loving him and, and the impact that he's made um, and his, it was what he shared with all of us over the years and being able to uh, work within his name to fight cancer is just such a honor for me to do. Well, so th- thank you for that making that possible for me. And now, you know, a legacy that he really doesn't even know that he has. And it's really significant in cancer. Uh, And when, you know, as he was dying, he said, hey, use my name to help the doctors fight cancer. So we did. And um, man, you know, Don Morton, who was treating him at the time, obviously my father didn't make it, but Don Morton was an incredible researcher and one of the highest funded uh federally funded researchers in the country at the time and he uh helped us establish a john wayne cancer clinic at ucla um uh, at a certain point we ran out of real estate there and we were getting squeezed by the school they needed more space for other things and we were kind of an outlier there and don left ucla left his tenure and took a bunch of other uh, clinicians and PhDs with him. They all gave up their tenure to move over to the John Wayne Cancer Institute, which lived in Santa Monica for many, many years. And this is a little bit before my time. I was a kid when this was happening, but, you know, immunotherapy, uh, those seeds were planted there with, with Don, uh, monoclonal antibody studies, uh, early detection blood tests. Obviously, the sentinel node biopsy has become a standard mm-hmm. of care worldwide for breast cancer and, and melanoma. And that was between uh, uh, Don Morton and Armand Giuliano, who's a you know world-renowned uh, breast surgeon who was at the institute for a long time and is now at Cedars, I think, running their their whole department. 
um, incredible people. So the work that got done under the umbrella of John Wayne's name is, is world class and very high level. And, uh, you know, people are seeing the rewards of that research now. And the other thing that they did that we still do is train surgeons to become specialists, whether that's in brain, breast, melanoma, GI, or urologic cancers. A general surgeon will come and if they match, they'll come to a couple of years fellowship training under the best doctors in the world and doing research. And then they go out uh, to communities that maybe don't have that expertise and help people who are dealing with, with cancers. It, it, it seems like if you get a cancer, you want to find somebody who is a specialist in your specific cancer. And uh, so John Wayne has, you know, graduated over 200 of those doctors. Each doctor sees four to 600 patients a year. So that's 100,000 people a year now getting cutting edge treatment for their cancer, which really drastically improves their uh, quality of life and their survival rates. Sorry, I started rambling. <laughs> that was great. Stay <laughs> this all before. <laughs> What's that? I'm like the guy who wakes up and talks and goes back to sleep. <laughs> well, Ethan, you've been living this for a really long time and you've been leading this organization. So you know this stuff inside out and out and made a huge difference long, long before, you know, I ever got here. So I'm just trying to help. I mean, it, it was my brother, Michael, and really Don Morton, uh, you know, who led for a long time. And then by the time I came along, you know, my brother had died. Don had died the original people had moved on from the Institute and um, we just thought we could put more energy uh, into it ourselves, you know, so now everything where the, the foundation used to support these other causes. Now the foundation has become the center of all those causes and we can fund a bunch of different channels underneath it because you, you fund that research and people don't really know that John Wayne's doing it unless you're in, the hardcore medical group and you're seeing the papers that are being published by John Wayne researchers, the public at large doesn't know, you know, that when Lance Armstrong was doing really good and, and that uh, Lance Armstrong foundation was killing it. We went to one of their events and, you know, girls like breast cancer survivor and she's signing people. And I go, did you by chance have the sentinel lobe biopsy technique? And she goes, no. And I go, did you know that? Or she said, yes. And she, you know, it did. And it saved a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of invasive surgery to my body. I said, well, did you know that came from John Wayne? And she said, no, I have no idea. And that's when we realized, gosh, we've got to let people know about the Cancer Foundation because when it started, you know, we arranged it to be funded by like licensing deals that we did or partners that we were working with would want to fund it. And we never really, you know, the world at large didn't know about it. They, they, they you know, people would hear about it and fund things, but we didn't do events and we were small, you know, it was a, uh, it was just something that, that did the work sort of behind the scenes. And so we thought, well, gosh, people need to know because, you know, by the time I came in, he had that tremendous legacy in cancer and hardcore people who are fighting cancer and doing research knew about John Wayne. So it was Don and my brother. And then we, you know, we started doing things ourselves and we thought, well, how could we get some visibility and do some good? And we're right here by University of California, Irvine. And they had a program for kids from Australia, teaching them about sun safety. Melanoma is a huge killer, right? And a very difficult right. to treat. And it was some of our roots at John Wayne were, were in melanoma and the treatment of melanoma. In fact, sentinel node biopsy was originally thought to be, it was created to, to try to help people with melanoma. It worked much better for breast. But it came out of that melanoma research. Um, Don Morton had a melanoma vaccine. Uh, you know, I had, I had a friend who had stage four melanoma. Um, got the experimental vaccine and is still alive today, 35 years later, raised a family, runs a business, uh, just a super guy. And I got to take him to one of the events before Don died. And he got to meet Don Morton, who was responsible for wow. literally, he got a series of shots and his cancer went away. I mean, it's unbelievable technology. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we heard about this program at UCI from Australia, just teaching kids the information, you know, like, if you keep a kid from getting a blistering sunburn before they're 20, say, or young adult, they're 50% less likely to develop a malignancy. And uh, I thought that was huge. You know, one, you're getting them thinking about it. You're giving them the tools. This is 
Southern California, they're junior lifeguards, they're out in the sun, they're playing volleyball, baseball, football, surfing, and they're at the beach. Like we used to get fried and, and peel the skin off. And years after starting this program and growing the program from uh, you know, a group who used to go around to schools and do it, we, we've gone into the junior guards program with the California lifeguards. And we started in Newport and it's grown. Uh, and now we're in every junior lifeguard program from the Mexican border to the Canadian border and in 12 other states and on the East coast. And uh, that, that feels good. You know, we're, we're out there. I don't know. We're coming up on, I know we hit half a million kids last year. Um, They all get a hat from John Wayne. They all get the sunblock. And so it, it gets them one looking for cancer. They've gone home and found cancer on themselves and their, families and then brought people into John Wayne to get treated for that cancer. We have a couple examples of that, but just that basic information for a kid, you know, if I would have had that information, maybe I would, I had melanoma last year, you know, just like barely a blemish on my cheek. Here's, here's a photo of it. I don't know if you can see it. There was nothing like you could not see anything. It was just a little discoloration, you know, and that turned into, you know, that. Wow. Uh, and, uh, luckily mine was found really early. So I didn't need any secondary treatment, just surgery, but you know, they have to cut a big circle out around the spot. And then that was the easy part. Then getting your cheek together without pulling your eye down or your lip over or something. That's the, the plastic surgery part, but it brought that program home to me because, you know, it made me realize like, heck, if, if I had, if I had that information, maybe this would just be some other type of thing that could just be frozen off or something. Yeah. And, and the other thing that was recommended during that process is uh, a lot of people recommended just getting the Mohs procedure where they just scrape it, scrape it. And so uh, in talking to some of the, you know, the cancer doctors that I know, they said, you know, if it's basal cell or squamous cell, do the most. But if it's melanoma, do the full resection. Yeah. And it's a big deal because for the full resection, you got to go into a general anesthetic. It's a surgery. There's this major plastic surgery part. If you do the Mohs, you're just, you're kind of in there under a local and it, it supposedly it's not so uh, dramatic, mm -hmm. but it's that information, you know, who are you going to listen to? Right. The good guys who spend their life doing this or, you know, somebody else. So uh, we just start well, with things that we thought would would make a little difference and things that we could actually accomplish as a small, you know, organization. Some of the facts that people might not know is that one in three Californians get skin cancer at some point in their life. Ethan, you're one of the statistic at one in three and in the bigger United States it's one in five. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize, wow, it's, it's really going to impact a lot of people. And the more we can tell kids about it early, yeah. get them. Is melanoma the largest killer of men? We oh, I don't know. Because I could be, could be talking out the side of my mouth. But I heard a statistic recently, and I was shocked because the thing with melanoma is it's it, once you get it, it moves around in a weird way, different from other cancers. Uh, uh, Katie's looking it up. Yeah, we can look uh, it up. That that's sort of where we were, and at a certain point, we need we needed some professional help. And that's what we thought about Stacy. And that's why we reached out to Stacy to come in and help us because we do want to go out, you know, to the public in a large way and say, hey, look, Joe Wayne's accomplished a lot. He has a film legacy and he has this incredible legacy in, in cancer and helping people. And nobody knows about it. And it, they still love him. There's millions of people who, who care about him and watch his films. And I know they'd like a cause to donate to. So let's go you know, speak to the public at large and invite them to join us in the fight. Absolutely. And, you know, just kind of stepping back to Block the Blaze, in the last year, we've connected with the Baylor School of Medicine in Houston, and we've done a train the trainer. So now we have the students going into the school system in Houston, educating in English and in Spanish, we can reach even more people, which is really exciting, doing the same thing in Arizona with Mayo Clinic there with their students, and in Minnesota and Rochester, and we're reaching out to some other universities where we can continue to expand our reach, because the more kids we reach, the more cancer we can stop. Yeah. So, you know, and the more we do events and tell people about our organization, how they can get involved, whether it's making a donation or whether it's getting involved with our John Wayne Grid series, helping us raise money, the more we can do to fight cancer together. Helping us raise money, bringing awareness to the fact that you have power to control some of this, and three, getting people off the couch, outside, Definitely. and in their own personal health, 
and becoming healthier people. Yep. Major, major part of a lot of our problems, I think, is just the fact that people are not healthy. And I look at it, I really saw with social media. Like social media just goes right to the bottom of the brainstem. Like what, dong, 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 what's, <laughs> what's the most common denominator trigger that we can put out there and destroy people's like sanity, right? And then you look at fast food, same thing. What, what are the three things that give, that trigger that dopamine rush for people? Where you put, you know, salt, fat, and something else, you know, you put that in there. And then, you know, it, it's just like our whole life, uh, and I can remember my father talking about this, you know, when he, when he talks about getting too gory or showing too much on screen, he's like, it's a slippery slope because as soon as somebody does it and they make money, everybody's going to have to do it. And that's right when, uh, you know, sort of venture capital was investing in studios and those big mm. monolithic like studio heads were selling out. And so, you know, once the bankers or the money guys got in there, if you showed something that made money, then you got to show two the next time and three the next time. And I think that just tumbled down through our whole society, whether it's social media, food, uh, information, it's just all gone down. And then, you know, if money's the God, then, you know, they're not going to use real ingredients in our ketchup and on our sauces and in our salad dressings and all that stuff. They're going to go to the cheapest high fructose corn syrup, the cheapest oil, all these things that are we're learning now or we know now are really terrible for us. So I feel like as bad as social media is, there's definitely a good side, a way to communicate with people about them and a way to get this information out to people and give them the tools and resources to go, oh, I'm going to make a choice here. I'm not going to buy ketchup with 43 ingredients that I can't even put else on it. I'm just going to get the one with, you know, tomato vinegar and salt and pepper in it, you know, and start, start opening people's eyes to the fact that, you know, the world that we're in right now is sort of created to make money. And I think we can still make, we've gone from sort of a moral culture to a money culture. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to swing back. I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, to your point about social media, What's what I love about our John Wayne Grid series is that it's outdoors. It's bringing people together in person. Thank yeah. goodness. After, you know, a year of 2020 where we were virtual with all of our runs and, and trying to get people connected, you know, online and through social media. Beginning of 2021, you know, as you remember, Ethan, we were trying to figure out, are we going to go Newport Coast in person? And yeah. we got the news one month before our event. And then we were in person and we went the rest of the year with all in-person events. But I think it was just so great to raise money with those events, but really bring people together and get them outside running and participating and excited together was so much fun for me to see. I know you loved it too. I loved it. I mean, I like being out in that, you know, I like being outside. So to be able to go to Lone Pine or, you know, Fort Worth or uh, Newport Coast or Pioneer Town. I mean, these are beautiful places that were first sort of delivered to the public at large through the big screen, right? Through movies. Uh, and so it's fun to go back out there. And if, you know, there's a whole culture of people who go camping and car camping and just exploring or hiking and, and, uh, it's, these are places that they go anyway. So to be able to have a, uh, an event that, you know, one, we typically go to the place, we clean up the trails, we clean up the area. We, we bring something, we, we go there, we bring something to the table and we leave it better than we found it. And the events are, you know, how long can people run two or three hours and then we're out of it. So it, it, uh, I like them. Yeah, they're so much fun. Just so yeah, going to those places. Yeah, yeah, you've been to all of those places several times. So just so our audience understands, um, the John Wayne Grit series is a series of trail runs. We have three in California, one in Arizona, and one in Fort Worth, Texas. And they're different lengths, anywhere from a 5K to a 25K. Got a 10K and a half marathon also, depending on the location we're at. Mm -hmm. But an opportunity to register or fundraise and get out there and come run with us. Um, some people walk if they want to, but most people are out there running on these beautiful, beautiful trails at the same time fighting cancer. And as you said, some of them are where your dad filmed some of the movies. Oh yeah. And I love it. Uh, you know, I love it. The people will, will come out uh, and participate. And then, you know, we try to make our goodie bags as special as possible for them. So all the products in there are, you know, Yeti, Patagonia, uh, Igloo, like whatever, whatever the brands are, Garmin, Sun2, we, we, we've had great sponsors and 
great prizes and great, you know, initial things that you get in your goodie bag. My train of thought. Here's, here's all the me. Huh? The feedback that we've gotten, we've done surveys after some of our runs and the feedback we've gotten from our participants is fantastic event. Loved it. It was so much fun. Love meeting you, Ethan. Love meeting Finn. And well, we haven't seen Finn on camera yet today, but also the goodie bags. They're like, these are some of the best goodie bags I've ever gotten. And so that's great. But what we really get some horsepower out of it is when people put together those teams and they actually bring it to fundraise and then they can get, you know, better gifts and free entries and things like that. And it really does move the needle for the foundation. Absolutely. When they Absolutely. Team is where it's at. We just saw that in Fort Worth with Team Patterson and Team Lawson and Hotel Drover team. And it's, just so, it's more fun when it's a team. Like they have a sure. good time because they've all done something together. It's like they're all coming out in the same shirts. They're all walking together, yeah. right? They're rallying to around each other. Sometimes they're rallying around a person at their work who's fought mm -hmm. cancer. So it's pretty meaningful for them. You know, there were some amazing stories that we came across this year from event to event. And I was just thinking back to Newport Coast. And Ethan, you were talking about your melanoma earlier and being treated at John Wayne Cancer Institute. You know, all the work that's been done there. Um, you remember Kennedy? Well, I, was our treated, life I was after cancer. So I was treated at UCI. No, yeah, I didn't mean you. But I meant the um, person I'm going to talk about. So Kennedy uh, was singing our national anthem at our Newport Coast. She was a junior lifeguard. She went through our Block the Blaze program. Um, she loved it. And um, her dad, before she was born, was diagnosed with melanoma. And he was treated at John Wayne Cancer Institute. And he survived. And uh, when she found out about our events, she got in contact with us and said, hey, we want to get involved. And she came out and she sang the national anthem. She did a great job. And her dad told his story about his fight with cancer. And it was pretty powerful to um, have everybody there hear about that treatment that he had received and, um, and to see her sing. And then we were in Pioneer Town, and this is personal for me. One of my best friends, family friend, we considered them family. We celebrated all of our holidays together. She came out with her son and her son's best friend. And you might remember um, Jordan and Mitch running. And um, they're high school kids that are cross-country um, athletes. And we lost her sister and sisters. My friend was one of my best friends growing up to brain cancer a few years back. And so her kids came out to run for their, for her aunt uh, or for his aunt and, and for her sister and sister and Anne volunteered all day with us. So it was really special for me um, to see that connection at that event. And then Flagstaff, you remember meeting Stephen? Yeah. Yeah. Stephen fought cancer through COVID. And he won. And then he came out and found out about, well, he's a big John Wayne fan anyway. Um, he had ordered our hats online at our online store and um, found out our better event and registered and went and talked to his doctor. And doctor said, hey, you can't run that half marathon. I'll let you go, but you have to walk it. And he walked the whole thing. And he was the last one to finish the, finish the race. And his whole family was there waiting for him because it was such a celebration of his battle against cancer. And it's something that he was able to do and to celebrate that tremendous victory for him and his family. It was amazing to watch that. Very nice guy. And that, yeah. that's no joke. That's up at altitude. That was, you know, 13 and a half miles. That's a, it's a solid trek. Solid. Yeah. And then in Lone Pine, and this one's really touching. Um, in 2019, when the John Wayne Grid Series was started, there was a volleyball and basketball coach there at Lone Pine High School who was fighting cancer and he and his wife and daughter and some of the kids came out there and did an aid station for us. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, he wasn't able to be at our event because he passed away in July. But his daughter and many of his athletes um, started a team and started fundraising for us and raised over $2,000. And they came and they ran and, and they shared their story with us about how much he met in their community and how much they loved him and how honored they were to come run run in his memory and fight cancer for him as I remember them they were really nice yeah yeah Juanita uh, was his daughter or is his daughter and shared her story the first race we ever did and then we had to go virtual the next year and then by the time we came back he had passed right yeah yeah and then we were in Fort Worth and um we had two parents both with little kids, one with a five-year-old and one with a three-year-old who were recently diagnosed with cancer. And they signed up um, to run too. One that's from the Fort Worth area, whose brother saw our event and signed his, signed his sister up so she could do something, so she could feel like she was helping, right? Yeah. Um, and then another guy from Idaho 
who happened to be in Fort Worth the week before is now kind of working with us, yeah. um, heard about our event and said, I'm coming back. I need to come run this. I, I want to participate and fight cancer for, for my daughter. The really powerful stories of impact that, um, of what, what they can do to help us in the fight against cancer. It's huge. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. You know, it's funny. We, you hear about these things. Well, if you do this, you know, you can avoid cancer when you're older. But when it hits those kids, you know, there, there's something else that goes on there that that, it, that affects them. And it's, uh, I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible. Really, really hard to see those guys going through it and to, right. you know, spend time with the parents really makes you appreciate uh, all that you have and every day you get, you know, because they're dealing with their little, their little kids going through it. It's a rough one. It is. Life's precious. Nice guy. And uh, hopefully we'll be working with him in the near future. Yeah. yeah that's the two. That whole team came out. I mean, they came from Chicago, Dallas, Idaho, yeah. and somewhere else. And, and they volunteered for us and also participated in the event. That guy was in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. We had some strong runners in Fort Worth. Yeah. A lot of competition to get those podium prizes. <laughs> Yeah, we had some really great prizes in Fort Worth. We had, um, for the fastest runners, we had Best Hat Store had given us hats, mm -hmm. custom shaped, fitted, and all that. So it was, people were running pretty fast for those hats. And then our top fundraisers got custom Stetson hats. So mm -hmm. some really great support from our sponsors. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Let's talk about some of the research uh, that we funded. Besides the runs and things like that and the kids program, um, we decided to fund research because the cancer Institute, you know, it was um, nobody got treated at our cancer Institute. You got treated possibly by a doctor who was doing research or clinical trials at the Institute, but you never got treated at the Institute, you got treated at that hospital um, by a John Wayne cancer Institute doctor. Um, and years ago, like when Don was around and, uh, Armand was around, um, Anton Bilchek is still there, but these guys were, um, they were sort of like titans of the industry and they could get federal funding that really made the Institute uh, work. And uh, as they've passed and they've, they've gone along, it's, been, it's become more difficult for people to get those federal grants. And we thought here at the Cancer Foundation, gosh, we've, we've trained all these surgeons and they've been trained to do research you know all their lives under these sort of titans of industry right the mortons the julianos bill check uh uh why can't i think of um who's the melanoma guy mark fairy mark fairy mark fairies is still going strong um steve o'day larry perot like these guys were were big time and so as this is as the as the people have changed there at uh, the institute and some came and went and the federal funding sort of went away we tried to figure out how we could have more of an impact on what was getting done so all these guys that they've trained are now out there with their own ideas but they weren't funded and they might go to a place where they're they're working and they're doing surgeries but they're not getting that research funding and they all have ideas born from this you know tree of life that they were you know, that they sprung from. And so we thought, well, let's start funding research within our network of uh, John Wayne Fellowship trained surgeons and researchers. So we started that how many years ago? Three or four years ago. Um, uh, and so we do four a year. And I hope you have some of these are pretty damn yeah. Well, uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome. I don't remember how many years ago that was starting. Is that started before I got here? It was right before you got here. It was yeah, okay. Maybe a I, year before you came. Okay, okay. I love this program that we do. Is funding our fellows, uh, John Wayne alumni fellows research, and and I would love to share a little bit about how we go about doing that. We reached out to people that we were already working with, like the you know American Association of Breast Surgeons and the Society of yeah. Surgical Oncology, and we yeah. said. Here's an idea we have. We want to create four research grants a year. We want to do it within this network. We want them to be peer reviewed, uh, yeah. we graded. And so they agreed to come in and help us do this. And now we're doing four a year. And uh, 
some of it is is like very understandable and some of it's a bit obscure but these yep. are all you know there's this massive puzzle you know out on the dining room table in our house and there's all these pieces missing and every time these guys you know come up with an idea or they publish a paper you can see oh this little piece fits here and this will you know and, and as we get that information out across the world then people can start putting this puzzle together and hopefully we'll get all the pieces in place soon and we'll be done with it yeah we can have a big celebration that we cured cancer so the, this these research grants are really important to us and the work that these guys do is is top level work and uh, some of it won't make sense to you but maybe we could go through like maybe yeah, yeah we, you mentioned dr mark ferries a little mm -hmm. while ago and i know this is near and dear to your heart because he does skin cancer mm -hmm. and melanoma um he's currently at Cedar sinai medical center and he's working on a medication to prevent skin cancer malignancies in those who've been previously diagnosed with skin cancer. Wow. So that's kind of a game changer. I'm uh, really excited to see what comes out of his research here in, in the near future. And then there's Dr. David Olilla, mm -hmm. and he is at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. He's working on artificial intelligence aided digital pathology to improve diagnosis in metastatic melanoma. So that was a mouthful. <laughs> I don't even really understand what I just read, but um, it sounds really impressive. It's a hopefully it's a great use of AI as opposed to some of these other uses of AI. <laughs> For sure. And then um, there's Dr. Juan Santa Maria, who's at the University of Nebraska. He's a recent graduate. I think he graduated two years ago, or right around the time when I got here. Um, yeah, time. great, great people. Great people, amazing doctors, such a brilliant brains. Um, he's kind of noticed in, in Omaha where he lives that um, Latin American women aren't going in for, for breast cancer treatment, that they're not really aware of it. And so he started a research project that's increasing their awareness and their participation in these breast cancer clinical trials in hopes of getting more people um, into the program and learning how to navigate that so that he can prevent uh, or can cure the breast cancer in the, that population in Omaha and then eventually everywhere. So really, um, and like you said, some of this is kind of more obscure. It's like innovative ways of figuring out, well, where is the need and then filling the need. Yeah. And that's why I see his research is incredible. Yeah, very cool. And, you know, you look back and going back to that sort of tree of life that was planned a long time ago by Joan Wayne, you have those threads that go to melanoma, and then you have threads that go to breast cancer. Um, it's funny that, you know, different populations just aren't, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, whether the information isn't there or in their community, they're not getting that information, but it's, you know, early detection is sort of what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys need to get this checked. It affects it affects your your group, and you need to look at it. You know, it's something you need to keep an eye on. And it, it's really something that came from John Wayne because when he was first diagnosed with cancer in the '60s, early '60s, I was a little boy. Uh, he was diagnosed with lung cancer, and everybody said, "Don't this is don't tell anybody. Just go in and get the treatment. Let's see what happens. Don't tell your agent. Don't tell anybody. Don't let the press know." And, and he sat there and he ruminated on it because it was the, the sort of, they thought it'd be the death of his career. He couldn't get insured to make another movie, et cetera, et cetera. And, and he, um, you know, here's an example of a guy that's not making a monetary decision. He's making a moral decision because he realized that, you know, his wife told him to go in there and get a checkup when he was real busy. And so he took the time to go do it. Mm -hmm. She's like, hey, something's going on. He's like, no, I'm fine. I just have a cough. And he turned out to have a, you know, pretty good sized tumor on his lung and it was cancerous. So he had the surgery, he had that tumor removed because of early detection and he was able to survive and, and live a, a pretty long life and, you know, raise me to, to, to young adulthood. And uh, that's because of early detection. And he thought mm -hmm. it, it saved me and it's my duty as a person to let other people know. Yeah, I love that about your dad, Ethan. He was so bold. And get a checkup, you know, and yeah. so he, he said it against everybody's advice. Um, and it, it turned out to be the right thing to do. And we all know now that early detection is important. So getting to underserved communities like that is uh, very worthwhile. It absolutely. And I love that story about your dad coming out and saying, I've got the big C. 
yeah. as being cancer and just being bold about that statement and the lives that he had changed by sharing that he was going through that and maybe the support that other people felt as a result of knowing he was in fight against cancer when they were at that time too, um, I think is pretty powerful. And, and knowing that everything we're doing now and that we're raising money through the events that we do and the donations that we receive is going to fund this amazing research that we just talked about. Uh, for me, I just, it's inspirational to see people coming to our events, raising money, knowing that we're gonna be able to put it to this incredible yeah. research. Yeah. And prevention. We talked about our Block and Blaze program earlier. Mm -hmm. We'd uh, love to get to a million kids educated. Oh, we'll get there. We will. You know, we started with just one, one little junior guards program here. You know, they let us go in and talk to them one day. And that spread fast because all those guards now are dealing with melanoma and having stuff burned off, you know, yeah. once or twice a year because they've been in the sun all their lives. So mm -hmm. providing all the guard towers with sunblock and, uh, you know, educating those kids about um, sort of uh, the ways they can still be out there and enjoy that lifestyle, but protect themselves from, you know, uh, melanoma years later. It's important. It's a good, good proof. And again, my dad was coming to the beach down here in the early 20s, right? So he loved this area, and I think it's really cool that Newport Beach embraced that program and helped us grow it, because it's a pretty big program now. It's huge. I mean, I look at those shipments of hats that we pull in, they go <laughs> to the kids to cover their little faces, and there's a lot of hats going out every year. Yeah, you know, and our program's twofold. As you mentioned, we have the summer program where we're educating at camps and junior lifeguard programs along the beach. Um, California, Florida, um, but all year long, we're also educating in the classroom. And yep. so we have a full-time staff member. That's what she does. She gets in touch with the teachers. What's that? We're doing it in two languages. We're doing it in two languages, right? We're, we're doing it with Baylor School of Medicine. They're educating in English and Spanish. And then Myra, who's on our team, who's an amazing presenter, is, is bilingual. And so she's now starting to present in, in both languages, which is just, again, going to going to get that word out there about how to be safe in the sun. Cause we want kids outside. We want them having fun. That would be smart. Be smart in the sun. Yeah. We should probably, uh, let people know that we've got a year end giving program. We invite people to go to johnwayne.org and make a donation. It's really simple. Just click the donate button and donate right there to make their impact against, uh, cancer. Your fight against cancer. Um, we're going to continue our year end giving all the way through the end of the year with lots of opportunities for people to give. Uh, we just invite that. We invite you to join us in the fight against cancer. So check us out at johnwayne.org. You can also follow us on Instagram at Join John Wayne. We're on Facebook as the John Wayne Cancer Foundation. We're on Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo. You can pretty much find us wherever you find us on social media and follow along, you know, like us and follow along all the all the information we share about fighting cancer, but also all the events that we're doing that you can get involved in and ways to volunteer to donate, to sponsor, lots of ways to get involved. Cool. And if you're near Fort Worth, please go by the John Wayne and American Experience exhibit. Uh, something that I really like in the exhibit is, you know, we have a giant wall that has his, his list of credits, you know, from, from the 20s all the way through, you know, basically 1980. And then in another room, we've got his credits of all the cancer surgeons that have become specialists under the John Wayne. And it's equally as impressive and something that he, you know, he never knew that this happened. Uh, mm -hmm. so 40 years later, there's, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people a year are affected in a positive way by John Wayne, because as he was dying, he looked at his children and he said, please use my name to help the doctors fight cancer. Boom. Yeah. 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 So yeah. individuals can have a pretty significant impact. Absolutely. And you mentioned the exhibit. People can also stop in there and pick up their Christmas gifts because there's some amazing apparel and other great iron yeah. and glassware there, you know, and you can also support the John Wayne Cancer Foundation by shopping online. We have an online store too. Um, and in our Fort Worth store, um, you can pick up your John Wayne Cancer Foundation merchandise there as well. Okay, good. Good point. Yeah. Well, Stacy, thanks very much. Uh, I think this was pretty informative and I, I hope people uh, had a chance to learn more about us and uh, I hope they'll consider joining us in the fight against cancer. 
by making a donation or coming out to one of our events. Yeah, come run with us. Thank you so much for listening to the John Wayne Grit Cast. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you like what you heard, give us five stars in the Apple Podcast app and follow us on social media at John Wayne Official. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go.